the study that was presented today, the Aristotle study, I think is generally consistent with some of the other studies that have shown a reduction in endpoint hemorrhagic stroke as well as ischemic stroke, and at least non-inferiority, and in this case, in Apixaban's case, superiority to warfarin in terms of preventing thromboembolic complications in folks with uh, non-valvular AF. So I'm optimistic. There are these drugs, um, um, as they become used more and as they uh, have more market share, will get less expensive for folks. One of the concerns that patients have is how much these medications cost um, compared to warfarin, which is a very low cost, despite the fact that there is some infrastructural cost in testing for warfarin. So I haven't, in a wholesale fashion, changed my patients over from warfarin to, for example, to dabigatran right now. Um, and we, we have a discussion about it. We have a discussion about the fact that it's a twice-a-day drug, uh, but it doesn't require any blood testing. And for many folks who have adequate in pharmacologic insurance coverage, they're, they're happy to, to at least think about switching, switching over. You know, there's some other issues with all these medications that, uh, uh, that are going to crop up in the case of uh, dabigatran. There's issues with stability of the drug outside its packaging, um, which, is, which is an issue. I'm sure that's not necessarily going to be a class effect. But um, there, there will be other issues with these medications as they come along. But I don't think it's going to stay the trend. And the trend is going to be that more and more folks are going to be on oral anticoagulants that are not warfarin as, uh, as time goes on. Right, right. My suspicion is that, th is that people will transition from warfarin to one of these new medications. And people who have new onset atrial fibrillation, who have an indication for anticoagulation, more and more of those folks are going to be started right from the beginning on an oral thrombin or oral factor 10A inhibitor. So over time, we're going to see these drugs displace warfarin, at least for this particular indication. We still have the mechanical valve indication, which uh, will keep warfarin around, will keep warfarin testing programs and uh, anticoagulation clinics around for the near term. But uh, I think there's going to be a gradual trend towards increasing use of these newer oral anticoagulants. And as part of that, one of the concerns has been if somebody needs surgery or needs something emergent done where there's a bleeding risk, um, is there a way to reverse some of these drugs? Uh, vitamin K is a very easy way to reverse, uh, to reverse warfarin, and there are now um, other pharmaceuticals in development that are going to reverse the effect of some of the oral uh, factor 10A and direct thrombin inhibitors. So I think that's going to be a problem that's going to be surmounted over time in the next few years as well.